Okay, so in the last video, we added a new user Fideliper and set up access for that user over SSH. Next, I'm going to exit back to user Ubuntu, who is allowed to use sudo because we didn't set up user Fideliper to use sudo. So Ubuntu is the user we need in order to install and configure files that are owned by root because we can use sudo in this case. So what I want to do here is to edit our SSH security settings a bit and make sure they are how we want them. And how do we want them? So what we want to do is make sure we do not permit root login. So the user root cannot log in directly over SSH. And then we want to make sure that people cannot log in using passwords. We need to enforce the use of SSH keys. So you can only log in with an SSH key instead of a password. So those settings are in Etsy SSH. And then we want SSH D underscore config. D is for daemon or daemon, which is the SSH server running on our server here, right? It's the service that allows us to SSH into the server. And that's what the configuration we're editing here. So what we want to do is find permit root login. And that is actually logged out. And I think it's at its default of prohibit password. So this means this will allow root login, but not with a password, but only with an SSH key. Instead, what I want to do here is do permit root login. And I just set it to no. These are commented out with a hash here. So this is the one that's actually going to work. Permit root login, no. And then the next one we want to find is password authentication. And this is already set to no, which is what I want, right? So we don't want passwords at all. And on top of that, I also don't want to allow empty passwords. So we'll find permit empty passwords. And we're going to comment that out, or I'm going to remove the comment so that permit empty passwords is in fact set to no. I think that's the default, but I'm going to make sure it's explicit here. And those are the important ones. We also have uh, the enabling of pub key authentication, which is set to yes by default. So we don't actually need to uncomment that. Now there are a lot of other options and you can do some cool stuff in here, such as uh, making sure only certain people can log in. So for example, you could add here, allow users. So I could say only user Fideliper and Ubuntu can log in, or I can even allow groups and say something like only group sudo and SSH are allowed to log in here. So users who are in the group sudo or in the group SSH. I'm not gonna do any of that for now. What we did for now is good enough. We just made sure that people need to log in using an SSH key and the root user cannot log in directly using SSH. So we need to restart the SSH service for these changes to take effect. So we're gonna do sudo service SSH restart to get that going, and then that should be good. Now let's just make sure we can log in with user Fideliper still before I log out of that other session. I can, so I didn't ruin anything. Good. So we've set up a new user, and we've set up a little bit of SSH security. I'm going to do one more thing in that regard. I'm going to do sudo apt-get update, which we typically need to do before installing anything. So this lets the server know the latest available repositories of where it can find packages. And then we're going to do sudo apt-get install with the dash y flag so it does not prompt me. And I'm going to install a little program called fail to ban. And what the fail to ban does is it monitors certain log files. And if it hits a certain threshold, it can block IP addresses attempting to perform actions against the system. So the configuration is an Etsy fail to ban. And we have a lot of configuration in here. The jail.conf file is the main one, but that's not what we want to edit here. We actually want to see what's in jail.d. And we have a defaults, and let's see what's in actions.d, a lot of stuff. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and edit the default file in jail.d. And um, if you see a .d directory like this, it's typically meaning there are configuration files that are going to be auto-loaded from this file and anything that's in there. And we have a defaults debian.conf. So and that's the only file in the jail.d directory, and that's probably what we care to see. All right, so sshd is enabled equals true, which is the default. So we really don't need to configure anything. This is, by default, going to monitor your audit.log files. That's in var log audit.log, and that is a place that gets logged to whenever someone attempts to log into the server, to authenticate and over SSH against the server. So if we go to var log and vim audit, I'm sorry, auth.log. So it's auth.log, not audit. And we'll see a bunch of stuff in here about what happened. So we saw our user add command before, and this is actually when the computer, this is actually when the server was first created. If I scroll down, we'll see some sessions opened by user root, because that's me using sudo. And we can see user Ubuntu is running some apt-get install commands, install fail demand, that's what I just did. And there's other stuff in here, most notably logins over SSH. So what fail to ban is going to do is to monitor the auth.log file here and if a single location in other words a source ip address has attempted to log into the server over ssh too many times unsuccessfully then they get banned for some certain amount of seconds 
So fail domain is going to allow us to get some more SSH security by actually monitoring the auth.log file and making sure that anyone attempting to log in to the server gets blocked after too many bad attempts. And we can see that fail domain actually has its own log file here also. So if we go ahead and edit or view the fail domain file here, we can actually see if there's any attempts and any ones that got blocked. So here's some IP addresses that are already attempting to log in over SSH. And if these attempt too many times, they'll get blocked eventually. This is something you should always install because almost all IP addresses uh, for cloud-based servers for DigitalOcean and Linode and AWS and all that stuff have IP addresses that are reused. And so the IP address ranges used by those clouds are known entities and are often ones that are attempted in a kind of a brute force manner just by bots attempting to log into insecure servers. So you should always install fail demand to make sure SSH is being protected. So in our next video, we're going to edit firewall rules and we're going to make sure our server is secure in terms of what traffic is allowed to come into the server.